Hello guys, this is a first for me. Um, welcome you into the, uh, the, the Vixen unit, the Plessy Vixen Electronic Warfare unit. Uh, we've been battling away now really hard trying to get things sorted and uh, we've pretty much nearly completed all the, the rack installations. Most of the electronics are restored. And uh, anyway, a little bit, just like first of all, say thanks uh, to all you guys that have supported the channel and uh, really good to see you all on there. Uh, just some great posts. We're seeing some really good stuff on the uh, military vehicle side now, and uh, hopefully got a lot more planned on the uh, the vehicle side and vehicle radio installations. Uh, I know there's quite a few of you that have joined us to find out about uh, how radios are wired and the the necessary auxiliary boxes and bits and pieces. Um, this is something that uh, we do have access to, and and as things go, I will try and get them published. Uh, apologies that I haven't been posting much content. Um, we've been flat out trying to get this uh, Vixen unit ready. Um, we are booked into shows in July. Uh, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to make those. But a lot is very dependent on COVID. Um, finally completed the, the wiring yesterday. And uh, all our 24 volt circuits are now fully uh, plumbed in. Um, everything has been rewired back to the main uh, switch console and fuse box. Um, I have powered up the initial mains through to each unit. And uh, as, as you can see now at the moment, we've got, uh, first of all, we've got the, the hour meter showing and indicating we've got power there and the, the, the actual hours that the unit has been used. This is the main distribution panel and switch panel, uh, the chip fuses. And uh, obviously we have the main first console uh, for Plessy for the Vixen system. Now, the way that it's configured, I'm, I'm new to this. We've done a lot of studying on this and it is very much early days yet. So I've got a long uh, climb on learning and, and how things are programmed, how it interacts with the receivers. Now, the, the way that it works is we have two manned locations. Each of these will have a... Plessy receiver in the back. Uh, you have the standard Maytel intercom system and communication system that, that runs throughout most of these vehicles and to posts. Um, we move on to, first of all, the VDU display and uh, keyboard. Now, when I restored this in the workshop, it, it all worked, so I, we'll see what happens in a minute. <laughs> so, uh, but the uh, Watkins Johnson unit there, um, this would have monitored multiple receivers. Um, I'll explain a little bit about the receivers to you in a moment. But basically, um, using IF or similar, uh, it would connect to the receivers and it would, very much like waterfall effect, uh, give you an idea of transmissions that have been found on the individual receivers. Um, we have timestamp unit. Uh, as it says, is to uh, presumably is time stamping the authenticating the the recording and the information generated, and below that the standard Raycol um, voice record system. Uh, quite simply, takes a conventional. I say conventional. I mean it's old history now. Um, cassette tape, like so, and that just drops into the drawer and uh, enables us to record the necessary broadcasts. Um, when I get this right, there we go. <laughs> um, we have the head unit, and this will control up to eight receivers. So um, we'll fire this up in a moment, so we can have a look at this. But um, basically there's one receiver that will sit in the back of here, and one receiver module in the back of the second unit. Now, also, uh, in normal circumstances, there would be an additional rack in the end of the unit that would host additional receivers. Um, the receivers play several roles. Uh, one is data, one is acquisition. Um, one is just normal voice mode, which is the, the mode that these two units would use as standard. Um, the fourth receiver is basically designed as a multi-role. Um, the, the VDU interface can send a, a firmware burst into that unit to change its operative state uh, and it would have done that by reflashing, I think reflashing the processor on the on the hot but 
uh, basically changing the mode of that that one receiver. It's just one receiver that will be multi-mode. Um, anyway, uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll have a look. Um, I've I've put a antenna um, tuning box in place, just an MFJ box for now temporarily, and we're just currently running off a uh, dual band whip on the top of the cab. Um, the uh, we have had the, the main mast up, but it, it's, it's not really suitable where we are here. Um, it, it's uh, we get a, a lot of people looking <laughs> and making comments. So um, what we're going to do, first of all, is obviously I did try and do this as a live broadcast, but we've got no, we've been inside here. It's Faraday cage. I've got no internet signal. I've got nothing, no 4G signal. So, um, and I've got no credit on our, our local internet within the unit. Um, what we'll do first of all is we will fire up the receiver. So that's now powering up the receiver in, inside the unit. And the next stage is to power up the front control head, receiver control head. And this will, this will then go through a self-test, which you can see it doing now. And there we go, that, that's now in a, a ready state. Now. Uh, I'm just looking at my um, battery consumption and it is pulling quite heavily on the battery at the moment. And I'm not sure. So what I'll do is we'll just have a quick run through. The uh, Watkins Johnson units developed a fault again in the power supply. So that's not going to fire up. We've got to strip that down. Have another look at that again. Um, but what we can do is we've got um, we'll fire up the, the VDU. So we power up the VDU. This, this will go through a test. And it comes up asking us to press the home key to confirm that it, it's ready. Here, hit the home key and it's ready for information. Now, I don't know whether there's any of you X14 uh, SIG guys out there that have had operator experience on this for the minimal amount of time it's also hits, but um, I'm struggling to find some of the programming data for this. Uh, I have got ver just acquired an additional material that has got some basic commands in it. so. We'll go through that and we'll look at that. Um, but basically we uh, put the tape unit on, uh, the tape unit powers up fine. And when we had this on test in the, uh, the unit, we quite successfully made some recordings without any problems. So it does work. Um, then we're gonna go onto the timestamp unit and timestamp unit that fires up okay. So that's now active as well. Um, Obviously, we've got all of this kit powered. Um, we can't really do much with audio signals unless we've got the, the, uh, the amp and speaker in. So that is switched in next, like so. Obviously, we can hear the, the noise on that. Um, now, what I will do for the moment is I'm just going to knock the timestamp, tape and VDU off. Just try and save a little bit of power. Uh, uh, the meter's gone down a little bit, sorry, gone up a little bit now, so we're a li little bit healthier. Um, it doesn't help with the fluorescent lights. We are looking at changing or putting some additional LED lighting in as well. Um, right, we have a local repeater, um, which is set up for Hubnet. Now, it's a Sunday night, so we'll, we'll give it a go and see what activity we've got on that. Um, and have a look now. So first thing we've got to do is give it a frequency. So... We hit the frequency input and we select 433.150. Okay, now we've got noise there, but obviously we're not uh, correctly on the band. Um, so first of all, we have to set the, the mode. So what we're gonna do now is we hit the mode button like so, and it should be num number five for FM. Okay, um, do with changing the bandwidth a little bit. Um, so, okay, if we select the bandwidth button and drop it to. My glasses on for this because I'm not sure what it says on that. Let's have a look. Four, one, two, three, four. Alpha, 
7.5k so there we go okay um, and there we go Okay, we, we can manual tune it as well. So what we can do is we can select frequency and we can use the, the VFO like so. Now we can also step the the spacing up on this. So if we take two meters and see if we can enter a frequency on there. So one four five decimal five hundred. Okay. Now we have a select VFO again. Very rural here, it probably will not find an awful lot, but we'll have a quick scout around. Now, whether they're a time and consideration, the, these units can be programmed to scan particular bands and uh, obviously look for set stored frequencies. Um, very, very quiet, probably not the best time to be doing this. Let's jump it uh, up another one to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't got an HF antenna attached at the moment. Nothing there. Very, uh, again, if we frequency enter again, I'm going to go back on to try again. One, go. That comes on with seven centimeters. They are nice and clear. Well, that, that's it, really. First switch on, and uh, we had a good idea it was going to work. We tested on the bench, but um, obviously things are, are looking good. Um, we've got an additional unit here, which is just. I'll turn it around a little bit as you can see uh, the video's got to be put into there uh, and we're probably going to integrate some um, we've got a AC450 FT and um, an 857 as well which we'll probably um, drop into this slot so we can operate a bit of commercial and hide it behind a photograph panel or something similar so it basically uh, for looks the whole display is, is correct in, in every way it should be um, there's, there's a lot of uh, bits and pieces we haven't got, but we're pretty much on the ball with a, the, the kit that really demonstrates what the system was about. Um, the, the truck is pretty much 99% accurate now. It's complete. Um, we, we're pretty much there. So, uh, as I say, guys, thanks very much for supporting the channel. Good to see you all. And uh, hopefully we'll get some of these shows going. We'll uh, get a few uh, more broadcasts and video clips and bits and pieces for you. Uh, looking at vehicles and radio installations in vehicles and uh, getting a bit of information coming through. But I am working on several bits of pieces at the moment. And as soon as I get time, we'll, we'll get those uploaded. Um, quite a, a few different informative pieces, both on armour radio installations and FFR Land Rovers as well. Um, someone's asked me if we'll do a little bit of Larkspur stuff with the uh, the ferrets and the... Um, sal uh, oh. Saracen I think it was and uh, we will fall back and try and do this as well but um, great to have you guys on board and as I say thanks for supporting the channel 73 is all many thanks and uh, bye for now